Okay, uh, here's a quick rundown of Corridor, published by Gigamic Games and designed by Mirko Marchese. The game comes with a, uh, a solid wood game board, 20 wooden walls, and four player pods, which is uh, nonsense. Uh, the box says two to four players. It's it's a two-player game. Uh, the the three-player game is asymmetrical, and the four-player game is flawed because you're constantly policing the player to your left. So instead of being the strongest player wins, it's the player who's got the weakest player on their right wins. So it's a two-player game only. You can throw out two of these pawns. Set up the game. You put a pawn in the center on each side of the board, and you give each player ten walls. Uh, the goal of the game is to get your pawn to any space on the other side of the board. On your turn, you can either move one space, orthogonally, or you may place a wall. Uh, walls are two spaces wide, don't try and do weird partial space things. The only other rule for placing walls is that you can't completely block off a player from being able to get to the other side. They must always have a path to victory. This would be illegal. This is okay. Players can jump over other players. This all sounds very simple and it does play in about five minutes, uh, but that's because it's a, a finite uh, strategy game. There's only so many moves in any given game before victory is assured, which is good. I, I discussed this on uh, one of my other reviews for Truffle Scuffle, which is also has, has that going for it. It's got a limited number of moves to the game. And so it sounds overly simplistic, but uh, there's a couple of interesting things going on with these walls. So you get to do the obvious thing of, of making people take a long time to get places and then forcing them to double back on themselves. And now this player can't go this way at all. He's got to go all the way back around here. Uh, but you also get to use walls to make sure that you have a path. You can use them offensively and defensively. For instance, if this is the setup, rather than just moving forward and eventually having my opponent block me off, and force me back around, I stay where I'm at and I place a wall behind me. That means there's only one path to victory for me, so my opponent can't place any blocking walls. There are lots of other interesting tricks like forcing your opponent to, to move next to you so that you get a free extra move by jumping over them, and placing walls in a place where another player would, would have wanted to place a wall crosswise so that they can't block you. This is probably one of my favorite abstracts just because it is as finite, like I said, and because you're, you're doing very interesting things with only two possible actions on uh, your turn. If you want the game to go longer, I've seen a cool variant where, where you paint one side of your wall green and one side red. So when you place it, you place it green side and later on it can be moved. And once it's moved, you, you, you turn it red side up so that, that it can't be moved anymore. So that, that extends the game and, and the amount of decisions if you want a longer game. This also comes in a mini version, which I think is the version that I would recommend uh, just because the game doesn't need to be this big. It's, it's very functional at any size. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please let me know if there's any other games you'd like me to do a, a quick rules overview of and uh, subscribe to my channel.